Hi, in this video, I will introduce the Hopsworks Feature Store and walk you through its key capabilities. Hopsworks is an open feature store. Teams can use the tools of their choice for feature engineering, model training, and model serving. Hopsworks Feature Store integrates with all major platforms in the data science tool chain, whether you're using Databricks or SageMaker or MLflow. Hopsworks is organized around projects. You can have one feature store per project and you can have as many projects as you want. Here I set up a dev, prod and staging projects in the same cluster, but there's also a demo project here. And I got this demo project when I logged in for the first time, I just ran the demo tour and it created this project which contains a feature store. We can see inside here, there's 15 feature groups inside this feature store, two trained data sets. There's a data owner and a data scientist. The data owner has read write privileges, can manage membership. Data scientists are only allowed read from the features store and create trained data sets and run jobs. So let's have a look at the features. The features are stored inside the feature groups tab here. We can see we have lots of features. We can browse through them. These are tables of features or groups of features. We can go in and have a quick look at um, this particular feature group. You can see there's three features in it. There's some activity. There's a different version of the schema. So if you want to set up an ML ops style workflow with your feature groups, you can have one pipeline writing to version one, the stable one, and data scientists working on version two, where they backfill and create new features and um, work on that until it's ready to migrate. We also can see that there's the job that was using compute the features and we have tags associated with the features. Now we can browse th through here for the features or we can even search as well. So we can have a quick look up here and we can search and I'm going to search based on PII, looking for PII features. I can search based on the names of features and I don't even have to type it correctly. We can see feature groups matching or individual features or training data sets. So let's go in and look at the feature groups in a little bit more detail. And um, if we go back to the feature group that we had earlier, we can see that there's three features here. And we can see there's a partition key and a primary key. There can be multi-part primary keys. We can see it's a cached feature group. So it's stored inside our platform as a hoodie table. We can see it says hoodie there. We can see that there's some expectations associated with this feature group. So when we write the data, the rule to look at the minimum and maximum values for the score will be validated before we write the data. And we can see our tags as well here. We'll see that there's statistics computed over the features. By default, they'll be computed when you write the data. We can see here descriptive statistics, completeness values, and then distributions of feature values. We can also um, look back at our uh, feature groups and we look at the on-demand feature groups. So these are where we don't store the data in the feature store. We store them in an external uh, data warehouse or data lake. We can see it says on-demand here. Um, and you can see there's three features here and we can see where they're coming from. We have a storage connector here and then this SQL statement, which is used to retrieve the features. You can even compute aggregates in here. Um, you, you're not just restricted to say, calling projections on data and external sources. So we can look at that particular storage connector and we have a bunch of them here. And um, there are storage connectors for all of the major data warehouses on AWS and Azure. We've got uh, Redshift, uh, Snowflake, and then there's ADL and, and, and S3 as object stores. And then JDBC is a catch-all, which gets most databases. So if we also go back to feature groups, we can see that we can create them here from the UI. Um, you could create an on-demand feature group often from the UI. Maybe you'll pick your storage connector and, and put your SQL command in here. Typically, feature groups will be created otherwise from, from programs. So maybe notebooks or, or Python or Spark applications. When we have all these features, and, and remember that these are, are reusable features, we, they're reusable in different training data sets. So here you can see I have two different training data sets. And if I go into a training data set, we can see that the training data set is in a file format now. It's not reusable set of features. It's, it's in this case, an immutable set of features for a particular range of time or uh, geography or whatever I want to filter that data from the feature sort down as. I can see there's three features here and some provenance information related to them and they can be stored anywhere. You can store them on, for example, Object Store S3 or somewhere where you can access them from SageMaker. We can see again, there's statistics computed over them, which are useful as well. Uh, if you're gonna use this to train a model that's gonna run online, you can retrieve these statistics from your online serving infrastructure to look for things like data drift. So you're comparing, for example, the distribution of feature values here in the training data versus what you have in uh, runtime. 
We can see also that, that we uh, support notebooks to compute jobs. We have, um, here's a, a notebook I had here, and I use this to, to compute uh, a couple of the feature groups already from the training examples. You can run them here. Um, we, if you're curious, there's some interesting ones related to uh, streaming analytics here. So if you want to do Spark streaming, and we've online transformations, uh, time travel, so point in time joins, and so on. Let's look at the jobs. I ran this job here to create the train data. This is a Spark job. We can get a quick overview of it here. Um, we can see when it ran. Um, quick or, um, we get the actual bigger overview here. Um, so it's a Spark job, and it has an alert uh, associated with it if the job fails. Um, we can we can go and look at an individual execution of the job, and you can see there's some nice support for the Spark UI. We can have an inspection of the Spark job, um, and we can even monitor it, and there's logs uh, as well here. Now, many of you will use the feature store from uh, an external Python or Spark environment, so you can run your code. Here I have a, a notebook in Colab, so this is any Python environment. It could be SageMaker, Azure, Data uh, Studio. Here you can see I pip installed our library, connected to the feature store with an API key. That should be private from a file. Um, and uh, I passed in the project name and then the host uh, domain name. And then from here you can then use EDA, exploratory data analysis of features, or you can create um, pandas data frames and write them to the feature store. And there's data validation there as well. You can do the same from Databricks or any Spark environment. So it could be EMR on AWS or even Cloudera on-prem. Uh, you can connect to the feature store, again with an API key and the project name and the URL, and then you can then run commands directly on the feature store. So that's it, a, a pretty quick overview of the platform. You get an idea of some of the capabilities in here. And um, there are more details and, and feel free to reach out to us and, and inspect the platform. It's open source, it's available managed. Um, so good luck getting started with Hopsworks.